Uh, Dr. Marlat said, we need to make sure that if we're testing social effects, we do it in as real world a way as possible. And we see what people think about what's happening. Um, we'd ask people in our research, what are ways that alcohol affects people positively, or you positively, in social situations? What do people tell us? What would you guess? They're more outgoing. More outgoing, absolutely. What else? Dance better. Dance better, exactly, <laughs> right? Then they look on Facebook and go, huh, not so much, actually. <laughs> How do you take that video down? Um, what else do people say? Uh, Funnier. Yeah. Say again? Less inhibitions? Sure. You get the general idea. People say more funny, more outgoing, more social, more sexy, more talkative. We then ask, what are some of the ways that alcohol may affect you in a not so good way socially? What do people tell us? Depressed. Get depressed, get down. What else? Act stupid. Number one thing people tell us is, I say something I later regret, I do something I later regret. That includes people saying sometimes I get more aggressive. We then ask people the very important question, have you ever had alcohol do different things for you at different times? And I mean, I see some of you nodding your head and I didn't even expect for you to answer on that one, but um, people always say yes to this. That should seem kind of weird. With most drugs, we can say, if you take this drug, this happens. If you take that drug, that happens. With alcohol, you do not see that same level of predictability. You could have someone on a Friday night, they drink, they're the life of the party. More funny, more outgoing, more social. Everything's great. Very next day, they're getting ready to go out, they grab their phone, and they get a text, and the person they've been dating for the last month dumped them by text, which is classy. Now, they're drinking the same stuff they had the night before. They're even drinking the same number of drinks they had the night before. But instead of having all this great social stuff happen, now they're drinking and getting really down and giving really long philosophical speeches about love to people, <laughs> right? Trying to get friends to watch The Notebook with them, which if that happens, you should call for help. But the, or make them watch The Vow. Um, but the, you know, the question is, what's going on? Alan said it has to be expectancies, and we can test this. So here's our familiar graphic that I've constantly replicated, where he said, what if we tell people we're going to serve them alcohol and recruit them for a study where we see how people interact in social situations? Upper left-hand corner, we can tell people they're getting alcohol. We can offer them vodka and tonic or beer. And that's exactly what they get. Lower right-hand corner, tell them they're getting tonic water or a non-alcoholic beer, and that's exactly what they get. Lower left-hand corner, the tonic water people were getting, they're told they're getting, to uh, 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 pardon me, they're told they're getting alcohol. The vodka and tonic they're getting is tonic water with a lot of lime in it and vodka right around the rim of the glass. No one's gonna get a positive blood alcohol level, no one's getting intoxicated. But when they smell the hard alcohol in the rim of the glass, you know, if at all, it tells them they're getting alcohol. Plus that first sip, first thing touching their lips is the hard alcohol in the rim of the glass. So you have a lot of people that go, whew, that's a strong drink, and then they stir it up and they don't even think twice about it. The beer, um, four different types of near beer. Make this El Primo near beer blend, where we do a little bit of dumping and make this concoction that in taste tests, people can't tell the difference between this near beer blend and the real thing. We had students at the end of this say, man, you guys should bottle that and sell it. Uh, but we looked into that and that's really illegal, actually. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, upper upper right-hand corner, they're told they're getting no alcohol, but they actually get it. In this group, the only thing that they're told they're getting is tonic water. Use the exact same formula from the 1973 Marlatt, Deming, and Reed study. And um, people were told, you know, we're gonna give you tonic water. They would get a drink that would get them to a 0.06 when they finished that drink and asked for a second, the second was just, out, was just tonic water. So that way you could get the whole room, regardless of their size and sex, to the same blood alcohol level. To make sure that the research generalized to the outside world, Alan built a bar on the University of Washington campus. Everything in psychology has to spell a cool acronym. This is the Bar Lab, the Behavioral Alcohol Research Laboratory. The Bar Lab, pretty great looking setup. Um, and the main area, tables and chairs, but I took this picture to really show how much of this is very lab-like. Um, the mirror, two-way mirror. You can get about five or six people comfortably behind that mirror watching what's going on. Um, if you're behind that mirror and there's a lot going on, you've got backup. Because right above the mirror, the Dos Equis sign is the Dos Equis camera, the area where the two X's intercept, hollowed out that part of the sign, put in a wide-angle camera. You can film everything going on in the bar lab all at once. Additionally, for fire code, we have six sprinklers on the ceiling. Um, and within, I can use the laser pointer. Within, uh, you can see right there, within three feet of every sprinkler, put a little microphone so we could tune into different conversations around the room at different times. Um, makes you good and paranoid if you've been in here for more than two minutes. But here's this great lab to be able to study, you know, does alcohol really make people more social or not? Remember that these were all students um, 
recruited for a study where we asked them uh, to be in a study to see how people interact in social situations. They were all over 21, they all did drink, and they all signed consent forms that said, at some point over the course of the study, you may be served alcohol. Is that okay? And of course, people will sign this, and that gives us the green light to do what I'm going to describe to you right now. Um, I should have said and didn't. Of course, that was part of the consent in each of the other two studies I described as well. People knew that there was a chance that they might be served alcohol. So upper left-hand corner, we tell them they're getting alcohol. That's what they receive. Nothing too magical happens here. They look like college students drinking. We say, please drink as you normally would for about the course of an hour. The volume of the group increases. People interact a lot more. Nothing too magical happens here. Lower right-hand corner, we say, please drink as you normally would. They're told they're getting tonic water or a near beer blend. And what you see with this group is also not that different than what you'd expect to see. We see, ready, go. And everyone stands around just looking at each other going, <laughs> so, like it's a much quieter group, much less interaction. At best, it looks like a bunch of students who don't know each other who are asked to hang out and drink water together for an hour. <laughs> Where you start seeing the really cool stuff happen is the lower left-hand corner. We tell people we're gonna serve you alcohol. Again, we give people drinks that contain no alcohol at all. Now, if alcohol does make us more social, this should be a pretty quiet group. But if it's the beliefs, more than that, we should see a very social group. I can't stress to you enough, it is ridiculous when you see how well this works. By the 20 minute mark, if you're coding videos of the two groups on the left, you can't tell the difference between the two. The volume of the group increases, people interact a lot more, something's clearly going on. By the 40 minute mark, that's when you start seeing the really cool stuff happen. The original experimenters did not predict that people report feeling physical effects, but it never fails. Some students report physical effects. Some people talk about what a great buzz they think they have. Um, some students are really conscientious, which is a good thing. I don't mean to make light of that. But you'll see students that are like, wow, I'm really glad this experiment's on campus because I know me shouldn't be driving right now. We're always like, okay, <laughs> you should get that checked out probably. Um, People get an attitude. We're like, we know you're getting tired. Is that common for you when you drink? And the person's like, well, hello, it's a depressant. We're like, hello, it's water. Um, <laughs> in the social realm, it's amazing to see. Someone usually surfaces as kind of the stand-up comedian of the group. Someone surfaces as the loud, kind of annoying person of the group. What would you guess is the top interpersonal behavior we see more than anything else? Flirting. And really schmoozy stuff, too. You see people walking up to people going, so, uh, what are you doing after the experiment? You're hitting on people? We're behind the mirror going, good line there, buddy. <laughs> going home alone. Um, we've had times where people have pushed tables together and played drinking games. We've had times where people have pushed tables to the side and danced. End of the hour, lights go on bright, stereo goes off, and we say, surprise, you didn't get any alcohol. In all the years these studies have been done, no one's ever been angry at that announcement, but depending on what you said or did during that hour, you do differ in your reaction to that announcement. Um, I've seen people, not in a scary way, but scream. Um, I find most entertaining the occasional man who will kind of look around and go, yeah, I knew there was no alcohol in there. <laughs> kind of blow it off like he was in on it. But what's crazy is that time and time and time again, people that believe they're getting alcohol, even when they get drinks that contain none at all, yet again, there's a very clear placebo effect. What happens in the upper right hand corner? They're told they're getting no alcohol, they actually get it. Told to drink as they normally would over the course of an hour. To me, in some ways, this is arguably a more impressive group, even though it's much less entertaining to watch. Why is it more impressive? Because these are all students that tell us, oh, you give me alcohol, I'm more funny, more outgoing, more social. They get it, none of that great social stuff happens. By the 20 minute mark, everyone's sitting around going, when's this dumb study gonna get done? By the 40 minute mark, physical effects of alcohol kick in but the attributions people make have nothing to do with the fact that they're drinking. They get sleepy because it's a depressant, but they attribute it to having not gotten enough sleep the night before, having had a long day of class. Their face gets red, flushes. We know exactly what causes that. That was happening for people. But instead of questioning what's in their drink, they're just, you know, whew, it's hot. And uh, take off sweaters and sweatshirts and asking if we could quit being cheap and turn on the air conditioning. It also isn't that rare to see someone reach for their drink and get a little clumsy, spill part of their drink. But instead of questioning what's in their drink, they're just like, I'm sorry, and clean up and try not to cause any more trouble before the end of the hour. Lights go on bright. At the end of the hour, stereo goes off and we say, surprise, you all did get alcohol. Everyone blows a breathalyzer to verify this. Please don't hear that everything about alcohol is in your head. The buzz, the reaction time impact, the judgment coordination impact, legitimate pharmacological effects of alcohol. But the social or interpersonal things people get from drinking, way more do to their beliefs, their expectations, and the setting they're in, the ones coming from the big red cup, the can, the bottle, the shot glass, and so on.